The Great Christmas Quest. Twas the night before, the night before Christmas, and all through the North Pole, every creature was staring. Santa's family had been rudely awoken by a crash, bang, a hissing, and a whoosh, a whiz, a pop, and a very loud whirring. Mrs. Claus woke up startled to find Santa was not there. For Santa to be out of bed at this hour was quite rare. He wasn't in the bathroom, nor in his study. Was he with Head Elf, his very best buddy? Head Elf, Mrs. Claus called in a nervous tone. Elf leaped out of bed with a tired groan. I can't find Santa," Mrs. Claus said. Head Elf looked puzzled, and scratched his head. The elves went looking, but Santa was nowhere to be seen. After a while of searching, one elf let out a scream. Ah! It is the night before, the night before Christmas, and Santa has presents to deliver. The thought of all those children without a present from Santa. Caused the elves to quiver. Mrs. Claus, I don't think Santa is here! exclaimed the same screechy elf. Calm down! said another. Try and get a grip on yourself. But he's not in the workshop, he's not with the reindeer, and he's not in his bed. A rather hopeful elf piped up. Maybe he went to the kitchen instead? He's not in there either! A worried elf exclaimed, "Santa is gone, but what or who could be blamed?" Mrs. Claus shook her head. "We must find him," she said. "Hurry, elves, and without delay. Christmas is only two nights away. Don't despair. Search outside. Look all around. Surely a clue is somewhere to be found." The elves each took a hat and furry snuggle coat. They ventured outside and stumbled upon a note, a ransom note hammered to a large ice block, precariously perched on a post and a rock. It read, "I've got Santa, and I'm not giving him back unless you hand over his big red sack." Full of toys for those disgustingly nice children. I don't want one, two, or three. I want one million. Who am I kidding? I want them all. Ha ha! That'll be two point two billion. But really, I'd rather the children have none. Then Christmas would be finished, and I would have won. So I won't meet you or greet you. You will have to find me if you want your dear Santa back. Put them under my tree. Yours sincerely, the dastardly, despicable, loathsome Snarkle. The poor elves looked so very upset and had lost all their sparkle. No one had seen the horrid Snarkle in years. The very thought of him would reduce you to tears. He was mean and miserable, cruel and vile. No creature in the North Pole had ever seen him smile. Legend tells he lives alone in his loathsome lair, and for not one child's happiness he ever did care. But where was the Snarkle's lair? No one knew. Mrs. Claus and the elves needed a clue. Elves, gather the reindeer and harness them up. We must rescue Santa and hold our heads up. The Snarkle won't win, and we must prove it. If we want to save Christmas, we had better move it. 
time is ticking. There's none to spare. We need to find that loathsome lair. My poor Santa must be in such despair. He must be so cold with only his PJs to wear. With the reindeer gathered and tethered to the sleigh, the elves and Mrs. Claus quickly sped off on their way. The sun was rising, but a blizzard had blown in. Ahead of them, they soon saw a towering grin. But it was too late to take evasive action. The snow was too thick to find time for reaction. With his humongous feet, he smashed through the ice. Ice blasters are friendly, so Mrs. Claus asked for advice. Mr. Ice Blaster, sorry to bother you while you're renovating your house, but we have a terrible crisis, cried Mrs. Claus. It's Santa, my spouse. He's gone, you see, stolen by the snarkle in the night. Did you see or hear anything that may help with our plight? The furry Ice Blaster stood tall and scratched his head while he hopped from foot to foot until he said. "'Twas the night before, the night before Christmas, and I heard all the creatures stirring. I heard a crash, bang, a hissing and a whoosh, a whiz-a-pop and a very loud whirring. I went outside to investigate the commotion. A tall, shadowy figure I saw in motion pulling a trailer of bouncing jelly. Oh, wait, maybe the shape was Santa's belly? They sped towards Candy Cane Canyon in the west. I'll come too and help you with this perilous quest. The elves, Ice Blaster and Mrs. Claus set off, riding through the snow the sun had now come up fully, leaving only one night to go. Onwards they journeyed, here and there, through Candy Cane Canyon and Ice Cream Mountain, in search of the Snarkles forbidden there, when suddenly they stopped at Chocolate Coin Fountain. Up ahead was a dazzling glow of luminous pink and green, shining bright against the snow, a wondrous sight to be seen. Mrs. Claus smiled and said, It's the beacon of light to guide Santa's sleigh safely through the night. Maybe the lightkeeper has seen something odd. The elves agreed with a wink and a nod. So they knocked on her door with a rat-a-tat-tat -tat and heard someone call. Who in Santa's name is that? A small old lady opened the creaky wooden door. She'd never laid eyes on an ice blaster before. Mrs. Claus explained what had happened. Can you help? she said. The lightkeeper thought for a moment and scratched her head. "'Twas the night before, the night before Christmas, and I heard all the creatures stirring. I heard a crash, bang, a hissing and a whoosh, a whiz, a pop, and a very loud whirring. I went to the window to investigate the commotion and saw a tall shadowy figure in super-fast motion. Strangely, pulling a trailer of round wobbly jelly. Oh, wait a moment. Was that Santa's belly? I do hope you find poor Santa and he is all right. You must hurry and rescue him before tonight. She pointed towards the shimmering ice tunnels of the north. They bid farewell to the lightkeeper and sped off on their course. Onwards they journeyed, time was ticking by. 
But without their Santa, the reindeer couldn't fly. So galloping on ground, it would have to be, with nothing but white, as far as they could see. Suddenly, without warning, the ground gave way. Through the ice they crashed, including the sleigh, into an enormous ice tunnel, big enough for two trains. Ice Blaster, I need my tunnel map. Here, you take the reins. Mrs. Claus reached for the map from the sleigh glove box. Ice Blaster, drive better, she yelled. Watch the bumps and the knocks. Oh dear, if you carry on this way, you'll break the sleigh. And then what will our poor Santa say? Even if we do, by the smallest of chances, manage to rescue him, there'll be no delivering of presents without a sleigh to put them in. They approached the eight exit junction to the snow tunneler's headquarters. Maybe the snow tunneler king could help them, or his sons and his daughters. Mrs. Claus took back the reins and the elves cheered. <coughs> the ice blaster was happy he'd not broken the sleigh. The elves were confused. Which exit should we take? It was such a quick decision to have to make. As they hurtled at speed towards the junction, the elves were so scared they could barely function. To be honest, elves, she replied, I'd rather not say. I'd rather close my eyes and hope for the best. The ice blaster panicked and hid his face in his vest. The sleigh came to a stop and they opened their eyes. They had made it unscathed, to everyone's surprise. Snow tunnelers resembled very large moles. They worked tirelessly, tunnelling enormous holes with beautiful fur, drill-shaped noses and giant chomping teeth. Though so quiet, you'd never know they were tunnelling beneath. What has brought you here? the king did ask. Oh, snow tunneler king, we have a perilous task. Mrs. Claus explained their fretful situation. The snow tunnelers replied with jubilation. We did not see the snarkle, but we can seek him out with a sniff. As the snarkle reeks of the most dreadful stomach churning whiff, us snow tunnelers shall be honoured to help you with your perilous task. Though, how much time do we have before Christmas Eve, I must ask? It's Christmas Eve now! The elves replied. Great candy canes, the king bellowed. We must make great haste. More tunnels were forged as they sniffed the snarkle out. We're going to rescue Santa, everyone did shout. Up and down, around and round they did go. Slaying on the ice was much faster than snow. At last they reached the Snarkle's loathsome lair. They hoped their Santa was okay in there. Waiting to be rescued by the brave, gallant troop, they burrowed up to the lair in a fancy loop-the-loop. -loop. Poor Santa in his PJs was a mere metre away, but no one could see through the ice. So the tunnelers stopped burrowing, Eating Santa by mistake would not be very nice. The ice blaster jumped from the sleigh, declaring, I can do this. I'll cut a circle in the ice and Santa I will miss. He won't be harmed, I promise. I'm the master of the ice. I'll use my feet. Just watch and see. I really am precise. He set about this very intricate operation, but first he needed a snow tunneler's cooperation. For, to use his feet to cut ice above, he had to jump upon a tunneler's nose. 
while the ice blaster pointed his legs above his head and used his furry toes. To slice the ice he was indeed precise and out fell the circular slab. With Santa on top in his PJs, oh boy was everyone so glad. To see Santa safe and well and no snarkle in sight, this perilous rescue had taken all of their might. Now to get back to Santa's headquarters, they thanked the king, his sons and his daughters. Goodbye, they said, and off they sped, back through the tunnels of ice. They slayed as quickly as they could, all the while as quiet as mice. Once out above ground, Santa's sleigh took flight. The reindeer galloped high into the night. Santa asked the ice blaster, Would you like to stay for tea? As a thank you so very much for helping rescue me. Santa, Mrs. Claus and the elves were relieved to be home. And the reindeer had a rest. In the garden they did roam. Before the children went to bed and hoped for Christmas Day, Santa sat with his family all around him, so glad to be home. Hooray! Did that really happen? said Santa. We almost missed all of those hopeful girls and boys. I would have felt so terribly sad if we had failed to deliver their toys. I'm so very happy to have such wonderful friends and family Happiness truly is the only gift we need around our tree. Maybe the Snarkle would be happier with a gift to open on Christmas Day. I'll slingshot one down his chimney when I'm flying over that way. Maybe then he won't be mean and miserable as he will know that I care. Even though he stole me away, I'd like him to be happy. So a gift to him I will share. The End Stop.